Hello and welcome to Sports Zone. Coming to you live from the North Texas studios, I'm your host, Derek Chiafalo. Ahead on today's show, we will recap last week's NBA trades. We will also talk some Texas Rangers baseball. And as always, we will wrap things up with our five minute drill. But we are less than two weeks away from Selection Sunday, so it's time for tournament talk with Kennedy Miller and Connor Bean. Fellas, how are you? Pretty good, pretty, pretty good. good. Doing Excited. good? All right, well, let's start on the women's side of things. And that means we're really just talking about UConn. All right. Uh, are they going to run away with it again, or what are we thinking here? Well, um, I expect them to, but, you know, as the nature of the tournament goes, anyone can get beat at any time, 64, 64 teams, you know. It just takes one bad game and a really lucky team. You know, since they're undefeated, there's like 102, 103 game winning streak. Everyone's going to get their best shot, and I think they expect that. So they got to bring it every night. They want to get this oh, crown again. The target is on their back for sure. What do you think? Definitely. They have a over 100 game winning streak like Connor talked about. They, the last time they had this much of a win streak when they won about 85 or some odd games, they actually had competition. Women's college basketball was interesting because Texas A&M was prominent. Baylor had Brittany Griner. Stanford was, was prominent as well. Notre Dame had Scholar Diggins. But now it just looks like UConn is running away from the pack. And the only team that I think I would say would be Notre Dame that could maybe knock them off. Okay, Notre Dame, what about you? Any other team besides Notre Dame? or? Um, well, probably the number two team in the country, probably Baylor, maybe Maryland, since they've both kind of been there a little bit. So they kind of that have that experience. But other than that, no, nah, I don't see any. Gotcha. Yeah, well, the, the UConn women are so dominant. I, I don't necessarily think they're losing anytime soon either, but we'll have to see. All right, let's 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 switch over to the men's side of things. Uh, what, what key matchups leading up to Selection Sunday, like what are some key matchups leading up to that? Well, I think anything in the Pac-12 uh, is a key matchup because you have so many teams that have kind of been knocked off. You can't really tell who's the dominant team. With Big 12, Kansas has already clinched their share of the Big 12 title. So I think it's just a two-man race between Kansas and Baylor. In the Big 12, West Virginia might make some noise. But I think in the Pac-12 with Arizona, Oregon, UCLA, those, those type of teams that have all at least knocked each other each other off once I think that's a toss-up in that conference between who will win the conference championship yeah for me we're gonna go over to the ACC you know North Carolina's kind of leading that division right now they got two tough games coming up uh, the first one's coming up close to here's Duke playing Duke again um, you know the, always you, a big one. you know you know how those games go it's always down to the wire with those games certainly and then their last game is at Virginia who actually beat them about last week so they got, um, you know, a couple of things they need to do to try to get ready for them, try to get this ACC championship and get ready for the tournament. There you go. Well, Virginia plays such a boring brand of basketball, this don't they? Definitely. Definitely. But it gets the job done. They you know? lead the country in points allowed, though. They do. All right, so uh, any clear-cut favorites going into the tournament team-wise? Which team do you think, uh, or maybe a couple of teams that you think could run away with this thing? Well, for me, you know, I like Kansas. You know, I think they're playing really exceptional right now. They're playing really good brand of basketball. Frank Mason's playing out of his mind. Love me some Frank Mason. Yeah, you know. Um, you know, it depends on, you know, where Duke lands in the tournament. If they get like a two or a three seed, I think they have a pretty clear-cut chance to get to the Final Four. And then they can get hot at any chance and win the tournament as well. So, either for me, Kansas or probably Duke. Kansas and Duke. For me, right. yes, it's all about getting – the right coaches getting their players prepared because like he said it's a 64 team tournament it's only one game a day so you never know how these things turn out so i like duke i like coach k a lot uh, I, I do like kansas with the three-headed monster of josh jackson frank mason and Devonte graham i also like one, some of the pac-12 teams i like oregon i like their size and i'll give them a shout out to kyle yeoman's team i like baylor because of their versatility and sure. jonathan motley and the things that they can do defensively to switch up i like those teams in the tournament well there's a lot of i mean there's a lot of competition right now it doesn't seem like there's a clear-cut favorite uh so it should be fun going down to the wire there now what about some players individual players that you think are really going to show out come march madness I think Dylan Brooks from Oregon has really made a name for himself this season. You know, he had that really clutch shot a couple weeks ago. Um, I think he's going to have a really good tournament, really solid tournament. And of course, you know, Alonzo Ball, the big name players out there, yep. probably going number one. Um, watch out for Grayson Allen, too. You know, he might, you know, kick a few people, and, you know. Yeah, you know, he might be tripping, <laughs> some, might be tripping people. some people. But, you know, whatever it takes to get the job Causing done. You know, controversy over controversy. there at Duke. All right, Kennedy, well, what are you I, thinking? I think it's a shame that the, the guy that, 
is probably going number one, Markel Fultz from Washington, probably won't make it in the tournament because his team isn't good. And that's the second year in a row that a number one pick might not make it to the NCAA tournament. So I'm going to go with a guy that's going to be second, Lonzo Ball. The things that he does on the court, especially with his passing vision, is exceptional, especially on being on the West Coast at UCLA and his dad coming out and saying that my son right now is better oh, than yeah. Steph Curry. And if you put him on the Warriors and put – Steph Curry on UCLA, the Warriors will be better. That's insane. That's Saying stuff like that makes me want to watch this kid on the brightest stage That's in true. college basketball and see what he does along with TJ Leaf and the rest of that UCLA squad. Well, do you think Ball can live up to the standards his dad is – set for him at this point? Well, here's the thing. I think ball can ball. But okay. I also think... The whole family can. I also mean, think, yeah. like his dad said, he's the the the, le the least best out of the three. I think okay. as they get yeah. younger, they are better. Wow. So I don't know if he can live up to it, but I think maybe some, maybe the youngest one can be Jello. the, the best, the, yeah. yes, the best brother in the NBA when they get to the professional sure. Very uh, league. Very good. All right, well, we will see what happens. March Madness begins. Uh, well, Selection Sunday is on March 12th, and then the madness will ensue after that. But we will step aside for a quick break. Coming up next, we will assess the Texas Rangers, and now that spring training is underway, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Sports Zone. It's time to turn our attention to Surprise Arizona and assess the Texas Rangers. Joining me now is Kyle Yeomans and Brady Pointer. Fellas, all right, so the Rangers are in the midst of their sixth spring training game as we speak, so they're five games under their belt. What have you seen at this point that you like and maybe some things that you don't like? Well, right now, if you really take the, the microscopic look and look at wins and losses, it doesn't look too good. Sure. The Rangers mm -hmm. are one and four on the season. They're down 1-0 in the middle of a game right now against the Los Angeles Angels, a, a division opponent who right now is 4-0 and I've been winning games, but at the same yeah. time, whenever you talk about spring training, it's a it's a one pitch at a time, a one swing at a time if you're hitters. You're working on small things that you won't get to work on in the regular season mm -hmm. because during the regular season, you're trying to produce, you're trying to win games. This is the time that you work on that, so win and loss is not looking good, but in terms of those losses and how they've happened, it hasn't been because of the hitting. The hitting has been putting runs on the board, and that impresses me. That's good. Because even as you're, you're trying to improve your swings and you're trying to uh, – let's use Joey Gallo as an example. He's spent 24 years on this earth, and he hasn't hit a curveball for any one of those <laughs> so far. And he's been sitting, working on hitting a breaking ball in spring training. And even if he ha wasn't able to do that before, if he's able to do that now in Surprise, Arizona, that's a good sign. And they've been putting runs – on the board, uh, more than five runs in ha more than half of their game so far. That's pretty impressive, Brady. What have you been seeing? Uh, I mean, like I said, I mean, I can't. I don't put a whole lot of stake in the Rangers spring training. Traditionally, they haven't been all that great in the years past. So um, I don't look at wins and losses. Um, but I want to see the back end of the bullpen, what they can do. Martin Perez, you know, Tyson Ross when he comes back, Andrew Kashner, A.J. Griffin. I want to see what these guys are going to be able to do because the front two, I mean, that's you, Darvish, Cole Hamels. That's solidified. That's set. But three, four, and five spots, you know, we don't really know what we're going to get out of those. And we can't, you know, we can't go with the first two and then come to three, four, and five, and then we don't know what we're going to get. So I want to see what guys like Martin Perez, you know, possibly Chichi Gonzalez, see what these guys can do um, as spring training goes on because when the back half, back half of the starting rotation is going to be a key factor in how Texas season goes on, you know, as it continues. But yes, I'm looking at, uh, you know, Perez and Griffin. You know, Martin Perez is the main one for me. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the great outing in his first. He started the game one against the Royals. He went two innings, two hits, three runs. Um, and then uh, Perez, or excuse me, Perez went two innings, four hits, two runs. And then Griffin came in relief. He went two innings, two hits, three runs. So that's not a very good start for those guys that are looking <laughs> to get in the starting rotation. Yeah, so. and I mean, they were able to bring in some guys in the offseason like uh, Tyson Ross mm -hmm. and Andrew Kashner mm -hmm. who are going to improve that. But even then, those guys aren't even ready to play yet. Yeah. They're not playing in nope. spring training because they're hurt. They're trying to come back from that injury list. And if we can get some sol solidified – I guess, confidence in our starting rotation. This yeah. team's going to be dangerous. Yeah, and I mean, the bullpen's been okay as well. I mean, there were, there were a couple of blown games against Milwaukee and Arizona, mm -hmm. um, but those were, you know, guys that are not, you know, pe people that you're not going to see in the uh, Major League bullpen. These mm -hmm. are guys that are going to be in the minor leagues. You're not seeing you know, guys like Tony Barnett, you know, Sam Dyson, Matt Bush. They're not blowing games. Which, exactly. You know, that's a good thing to see. You don't want to see them lose, but also you don't want to see the guys that are going to be in your Major League roster blowing games in spring training. 
Certainly. All right, now let's look at the infield. Now this mm -hmm. team, when you look at the roster, there's a lot of big names to go around. It's going to be interesting to see what Bannister does uh, with the starting lineup there. What do you think he's going to do? Well, there's a couple positions on here that are completely solidified. There's not, not really any kind of, I guess, questions on it. That's catcher. You have Jonathan Lucroy. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the offensive leader, the offensive uh, real quarterback for this team. And yeah. then on defense, he's going to be a stud as well. Uh, second base, Odor's got that locked down. Beltre at third, Andrews at short. Now, here's what I've been looking at is that first place position. You don't have Mitch Moreland anymore. He's gone. He's in Boston. You brought in Mike Napoli, but you also have a couple guys who can play first base who aren't listed as a yeah. first baseman, and that's Profar and Gallo. Yeah. Both of those guys played first base last year and did a, a good job, especially Jerkson Profar defensively yeah. had some highlight real plays that at first base could have saved a couple runs and eventually uh, he got taken back, put back on the bench because Moreland and because uh, of those guys coming in. And why not give Gallo a chance? If he can hit a curveball, he's going to be one of the best hitters in the entire major leagues. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Napoli, um, like I said, everything else is solidified at this point. I and mean, Profar is kind of the, the utility guy. He yeah. could probably he could play second short. He may even be able to play third. But he definitely he can play first, like mm -hmm. you said. He showed that last season. But I think Napoli, if he can – Keep his bat going like he did last year. He had 34 home runs, uh, 101 RBIs. It was his best season yeah, statistically. Yeah, his best career yeah. season hitting the baseball. And if he can keep that going and he can show that he can be an, at least an average defensive first baseman, mm -hmm. then I think he's going to be the mainstay there. And the Rangers really need that. They haven't had a mainstay first baseman in I don't know how many years. And it's been a while since that's happened. And I think Napoli has a very good shot to be this, the starting first baseman day in and day out. And then, of course, have Profar come in and be the utility guy. And then Gallo, if he can stop striking out and learn to hit the baseball consistently, then I feel like he can get his, get his time in and there. And it's so well. funny that we're talking about first baseman and the, the real kind of question mark over that mm -hmm. position because it feels like the Rangers have put major league all-star first baseman and they grow them on trees and then they ship them off. You yeah. have Chris Davis, mm -hmm. Adrian Gonzalez, Mark Teixeira, mm -hmm. all of these guys, Mitch Moreland and uh, Justin Smoke, all of these guys were in the Rangers organization, yep. drafted by the team, worked their way up, made it to the majors, and then ended up being shipped off, shipped off mm -hmm. to another squad. So it's weird saying that they grow them on trees, but at the same time, they, they can't, can't keep, they any, keep any of them. Keep a, All right, well, I know it's early, but what are, what are our expectations for this team for the season? You think they're going to be playoff team, win uh, the division? What yeah, are we thinking? I think a playoff team, it's, it's really – not out of the question for this team to make the playoffs. I mean, the AL West um, is pretty tough. I mean, the, the Astros are going to come back. They had a kind of kind of a down season last year. Um, they didn't perform as well they had two seasons ago. But um, they're going to be looking to bounce back. And a lot of people were picking the Astros to win the West. And you got to look out for the Mariners. They're always, you know, no really no really don't know what you're going to get out of Seattle. They can be really good. <laughs> yeah. or they can be really bad. So they're kind of they're kind of scary. The Angels are down. Um, I don't really expect a whole lot out of them. But I do think the Rangers have a serious shot to compete in the AOS. And if not win, they definitely have a good shot to make the wild card and get into the playoffs. It's going to be a tough division, yeah. no matter what. I mean, Seattle, statistically and on paper, one of the best teams, mm -hmm. best rosters you'll see in baseball. But they just haven't been able to put yeah. it together, like you said. Uh, once again, the Astros are going to be right up there as mm -hmm. well and contending for it. Now, Oakland and, and, and Los Angeles. I don't know if you have a whole lot to worry about no. there, but at the same time, you can't sleep on Mike Trout. The no. MVP of the league is still in your division yep. and one of the best players in in our generation to see. And they're still not not there as a team, but at the same time, you can't sleep on Trout. Mm -mm. Definitely. Well, we will see. The Rangers have one month to improve. Opening day, April 3rd, and we are excited. But coming up next, our analysts will recap last week's NBA trades. So keep it locked on SportsZone. Welcome back inside the North Texas studios. Joining me now to discuss last week's NBA trades is Jocelyn Mitchell and Bria Graves. Ladies, how you doing? I'm great. Well. All right, awesome. So last week, the NBA trade deadline, a lot of stuff went down. Uh, so I want to know, who do you, which team do you think came away as the biggest winner of the trade deadline? Honestly, this trade, was, the trade deadline was kind of weak to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, multiple teams. I guess I have some honorable mentions. Um, I think OKC, you know, getting Taj Gibson, um, that's really going to help Russell out. And McDermott, he needs, yeah, that's yeah, nice. exactly. Yeah. The, he's going to get a lot of help. Um, the Mavs, of course, they kind of got to start rebuilding. So, you know, get, them getting Nerland is is really good. So, just a couple of teams, Houston, of course. But what about the Pelicans? You like what they did with Boogie? Yeah, yeah, I like it. They still have some things to work out. Obviously, being 0 and 3 since the trade, um, but of course, not, nothing really just 
stood out to me sure. about this trade deadline. All right, what about you, Jocelyn? Yes, I really like the Boogie Cousins trade. It reminds me a lot of Tim Duncan and David Robinson back in the day. There you go. The only problem that I have with him is those texts his technical yep. files. Ever since he's been there, they have lost the three games. Not saying it's him, but I just need him to lose a little aggression. Well, he's, he's already gotten suspended. Exactly. Right? That's what I'm saying. He hasn't even been there long. He just needs to calm down. He sure. got it. He can do it. Also, like you said, Taj Gibson, he's a very strong rebounder. McDermott is a three-point specialist. We already know that. And then um, Lou Williams is a great scorer. He scored 27 points against the Pelicans in his debut. So I like yes. that a lot. Awesome. Yeah, I like what the Rockets did with Lou Williams. I think that's a nice addition for them. Yeah. Um, all right, now which teams do you think came away as the biggest losers? Losers. Definitely the Pacers. Them, they didn't trade Paul George, but... You think they should have? I, I, okay, honestly, I really think they should because next year he can just walk for free. Mm -hmm. So if they really just wanted to get something, I feel like they should have. But, I mean, unless they can get him to stay... They won in it, but I, I feel like he's going to leave next year. So What about you, Jocelyn? Awesome. I'm going to go with the 76ers. They gave Mavs a good player, but the people that they traded with the Mavs for Nerland Noel, they are all with Cleveland, actually. Yeah, uh, Andrew Bogut right? is with Cleveland. Darren Williams is with Cleveland. And, yes, they have the first pick, but they also had the first pick in 2016, number three in 2015, number three in 10, 2014, so on, so oh, on. Yeah. And they haven't had any progress or any productive, and they also traded those off. So I think that that one will be what I say, unfortunately, they just didn't – they got the short end of the stick. I'm just going to go ahead and say okay, that. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's look at the Mavs side of that deal. They pick up Maryland's Noel. How do you think that trade is? Does that bode well for the Mavericks? Do you like where they're headed? What do you think? Well, honestly, the Mavericks, I mean, hopefully, I mean, at this point, they might as well just kind of just tank a little so that they, you know, can get a nice little pick. But with Noel, you know, him being a young center, he's only 22. Mm -hmm. So they need a lot of young players. So I feel like what Mark Cuban is trying to is trying to rebuild, and I really like that. Like, let's not go after the big name stars or somebody that's old, like you know a veteran. Let's get younger players so we can kind of you know start rebuilding. Sure, and it was a protected pick that they gave away. Do you like that they did that so they can still keep their pick, their first round pick for this year, assuming you know it's anything less than top 18. I'm or, yeah, anything less than top 18. So do you like the what the Mavs did with that trade? I have mad respect for what he's doing actually because I think that is what we need to do is go young one of our strongest our strongest player is Dirk and I mean he's coming down anytime soon so for them to get Nerland Noel was perfect I think that was a good start like what you said I agree we need to tank so that we can prepare for next year and start getting back into the contention I think that'll work well okay so you think it's bad news for the Mavericks to try to push for the playoffs right now yeah, I'm not really agreeing with that because we have too many people like Cleveland and the Spurs. I don't think they're going to last past the first round, honestly. What about you? You think so? You, you don't want the Mavs to be no, making the playoffs? They're, mm -hmm. they're not going to. I mean, they they're not going to get far at all. Yeah. There, there's no doubt in my mind. They may not win a game. So, yeah, d just tank. All right. Quickly here. Kevin Durant gets banged up last night. How much does that affect? I mean, OKC picks up Matt Barnes. Does that help or are they in trouble now? Um, I really don't think so. Yeah, he's out for the season, but I think that's best for now because they have Steph Curry and okay. they have the other one. So I think they're pretty strong. I think they're good. I think the Golden State yeah, will still be no, okay? I mean, they already got, they're already in the playoffs. They're yeah. good. So sure. just the finals. Is that's right. The so finals, hard. it's a collision course yeah. with the Cavs and the Warriors. Exactly. So we will see how that ends up. But thank you, ladies. Stick around because we are just two minutes away from our five-minute drill. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Sports Zone. I am Jocelyn Mitchell, and I will be stealing the last five minutes of the show for our Mean Green Five Minute Drill. And joining me is Charity Blackman. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well on this good. windy day. Let's get started. We're going to get right into it. We have our first topic is the Mean Green women's basketball team. They have lost their last past two games this past weekend, and then they have two more games left for the season. So our first question is, how well do you think that they're going to finish? Um, I think that the next game they have against Western Kentucky, I don't believe they're going to win. Yeah. Um, they're the number one team in Conference USA. Don't see them winning at all. However, 
they do play Marshall this upcoming Saturday, and I see them potentially winning. I feel like they have to stay up on top of their defense because mm -hmm. that's what's been uh, getting them the wins for this past couple of weeks. So they have to stay on top of that as well. Um, as far as them going into the Conference USA tournament, I think that potentially they would make it to the first round. They're going to go to the first round, but yeah. getting out of the first round, I don't think so. Currently, they're like in the eighth seed right now. Yeah. Um, they're one game behind UTSA, so if they can steal a game against Marshall and pray the, to God that UTSA loses a game, yep, we'll get that seven seed or the eight seed. Either one is fine, but they have to stay on top of their defense. Yes, I like the fact that they did a game. They did a five-game winning streak, right? Which was the most since 2012-2013. Right, that was a really good momentum really changer like for them. Uh, they really needed that. But on these, these last two games, I was hoping they were going to get at least one win on exactly. the road. And they didn't. They didn't capitalize off of that. So I feel like that really hurt them as far as, like, moving up into the rankings. The thing that upset me the most is that we have beaten Southern Miss now. We haven't right. beaten Louisiana Tech, to my understanding. Right, they haven't. But the, also, Southern Miss is known for their um, – Full turnovers. court press and yeah. getting people 22 turnovers, and that's exactly what and we got. And we fell into the trap with the turnovers. We exactly. had the most turnovers in that game. So I, I don't think that. But, honestly, we do have some key players that are seniors, and so right. I do think they're going to come down. Candace you know, Adams, she steps up every time we need it. She forced the game in overtime against UTSA to get us in that uh, eighth seed. So as long as she's good and she's she's not healthy, but yeah. as long as she's on top of her game and on her three, uh, her three points, a three point shot, she's good. She's on point with those three points. She, she's I always. definitely have to say. <laughs> now, our next topic is going to be Mean Green Swimming. Now, they just finished their Conference USA tournament this past weekend in fourth place. How well do you think they did? I mean, I, I think, think they did pretty good. They did really good. Um, right now, their interim coach is Brittany Roth. Yeah. And she's taken over. And for them to come out with this fourth place win in the Conference USA Championship game, that's really good for her. This is her yeah. first season as an interim coach. And she's done an amazing job. Um, the 400 Melody Relay team, they really sealed the victory for the Mean Green this past weekend. They had a time of 3 minutes, 21 seconds and they were able to lift them over that hump to give them 435 perfect. points yeah. to steal that victory. So I feel like that's really good for them. They're on a roll. They're one of the up-and-coming sports on mm -hmm. UNT campus, so everyone needs to be on the lookout for them. I have to give props to the sophomore, Emma Beth Jensen, especially since that this is the best that they have done since joining the conference. Yes. This girl set her own record. So yeah. that, was, that was awesome. She broke her She's own record. She's on Steph Curry on campus. She's doing it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charity, Thank for joining you. me. That is all we have. Softball plays this evening at 5 p.m. versus St. Francis. And you can cheer on our women's basketball team at the Super Pit tomorrow night at 7 p.m. as they take on the number one ranked team in the Conference USA, Western Kentucky. All right, that concludes this week's episode of Sports Zone. Be sure to follow us on all our social media handles at NT Sports Zone. As always, thank you all for watching, and we will see you same place, same time next week.